Welcome back everyone, and today we are going to cover how to change the logo, default font, and the default colors in the Divi Builder. This is very useful for a fresh site when you don't want to keep setting the fonts, colors, and everything as you're building. It's a great way to get started off on the right track. You can see this is a empty site we have here with nothing um, really fancy. It's exactly what Divi gives you when you first start out. So first thing we want to do is go into Divi and theme options. This is where we'll set our initial settings. You can see we have no logo set, which is why we have the default Divi showing here. And so I'm going to upload, select files, and my logo is actually an SVG. You can see that that's grayed out. And I'm going to throw in a bonus tip here right off the bat, going to plugins, add new, and we're going to look for SVG, and it should be SVG support. There it is. Install that guy. Activate it. And with the base settings, it just lets you upload and use SVGs. So if I go into Divi theme options and try to use that same logo again, now it's available. You can see how small that was. It's a four kilobyte file, and it can be as big or as small as you want it to. That's the beauty of SVGs. I recommend using them as much as you can, and we're going to do this correctly too. We're going to say title, logo, and we will say brand logo for the alt text. Help our SVG. Oops, didn't mean to click that though. But it's still saved, and then we should have our <laughs> our save button got freaked out, but it still worked. Save changes, and now if we go and refresh over here. Should have that cool Instagram logo, boom, right in the top. I got that off a site that gives you free SVG logos, so it's very handy. Um, then as far as our colors, you can see right here we have Color Picker Default Palette. Now right now it's just this rainbow palette, which typically with a real brand, you won't have all the colors under the sun in use. So in this case, we just want this kind of blue, this red, this gold, and this orange. So I could be precise and actually use a color picker. I'm just going to kind of freestyle it. So this red, let's make it a little more, this kind of orange tint here. That's good. This orange is a little more on that end. And then we have like a nice kind of blue cross section like that. And then a very blue. And then I like the other two. Those actually kind of fall in the spectrum. So now you can see, should, we'll make this a tad bit redder. There we go. And so now you'll see later, when we're actually working on posts, these will be the available colors to us instead of the multicolor spectrum. Um, so we'll have the black, white, and generally um, I like to use a slight off black. It's kind of more of the style, something like that. So it's like more of a more of a graphite instead of a straight black. It's a more popular style nowadays. And so once we've set that, we will hit save. And the next thing we will do is hop into the Appearance and Customize panel. And this is where we'll set the default fonts and more default colors as we go through. Usually when you're building a site, you will already have a rough brand style guide, and they'll tell you, you know, on our heading texts, which would be things like this. We like to use, say, Montserrat or Poppins or Arial. Um, and for their body text, they might want more of a serif font or a sans serif font. In this case, it's a sans serif. You can see there's no kind of Times Roman look to it. And so going off of that, you should be able to fill this out. There's a lot of settings here, and I used to dread filling out this portion of a Divi site. But once you have a brand guide already set out, it's actually a lot easier than you think. So just make sure you get together with your team at the start of everything and figure out what sort of typefaces and colors do we use as a brand. And that makes this section way easier. And so I'm just going to click through it myself. I believe site identity, we don't need it in there. Layout settings shouldn't be there, but I'll click it anyway. That's more if you, yeah, if you want to do anything fancy with your gutter layouts. Um, I am actually going to change the theme accent color. That, let's go with that sort of reddish color. I'll just really run with red for this brand. And yes, you should use exact hex codes, don't just freestyle it. <laughs> but you can see it changes the bullets right away, and so that will save you from having to change the colors of the bullets um, if you are going to run with it that way. Typography, uh, body text size, I generally like the default to be 16. And then line height, that's, uh, line height's a little bit, that's fine. Header text size, good, good. You can probably keep most of this, maybe make all the headers bold and all caps. 
header font. You can change the header fonts here. Well, I'm just going to go with blue too. I'm going to run with it. <laughs> and we'll scroll down to... I'm just picking random fonts here, really. That's actually a pretty cool font. I'm glad I found that. Body link color. Probably the link wanted to be a very on the brighter end of our colors, um, or rather the brighter end of our brand palette. And so with those five colors we set, the red was the brightest, and usually you want your brightest to be the one you use for links. Um, somehow we accidentally opened that, but I'm just going to scroll past it. Body link color is now set. Body text color, yeah, this is graphite. Headers is graphite, so that's cool. I'm going to keep that as is. I'm going to hit publish so I don't lose any of my settings here, and I'm just going to go back. Background, I almost never set background. This is more of an older school um, setting in my opinion, so you can just ignore it. If you have a use case for it though, congratulations. Header format, don't really do much there. This is more about if you're going to use the default header. That's more of a separate video that I'll cover. Um, at the very base function, it's the same kind of thing. Um, you can change the fonts, font styles, text color. This is if you're on that actual page, so if say I was on this second home page that we have for some reason, um, then if I want that to be, say, this sort of orangey color, or this, I guess, yellowy color, now you can see that is our current page, and it's highlighted in that way. Background color, drop down background color, drop down menu line color. These are all best set by actually just changing one or two values, hitting publish, and then opening the page in a new tab and checking it. Um, there are mobile styles being applied, so you'll want to actually, like, shrink down if I can actually get my mouse on the edge of my screen. You want to shrink it down so you actually trigger the mobile styles and then you'll see, okay, there's this line up here, background is white, this line is red, that's red, that's good, good. Get down to the smallest and then back up. And so that's the best way to properly see what you're changing. Like drop down menu line color doesn't actually seem to apply to us because the accent color is already taking over so we don't need to override it here, which is quite handy. So kind of a guess and check. If you're using a custom header, all of it is moot and you won't really affect any of this, but it's worth knowing what to do if you choose to use it. And this is if you add a secondary menu bar um, to your header. So again, getting more into advanced header stuff, so I'm just going to gloss over this a bit more now that we've covered the, the basics. Elements, I like to turn off the search icon. That's kind of a whole other thing, but I'm not a fan of search on a website at all. Um, I think that it should just be laid out very cleanly, and the navigation structure should be simple so that you can just glance at it, know where you're going to go, know what the call to action is, but that's more of a marketing discussion than it is a web development discussion. As far as everything else, um, I would recommend footer. Usually people do not use the default footer, so I'm just going to skip that altogether. Buttons, though, is quite handy. Buttons, you can actually preset what the buttons will look like, at least the default button styles here. And you might even be able to avoid having to create a custom button and then copy it everywhere or use a preset style or a global style. You might even be able to get away with this as it is. So let's just design a theoretical button that we like. Um, for the sake of actually seeing what we're doing, I'm going to edit this page over here. I think it's a blog, though. Eh, either way, anything can be edited with Tiffy. Fantastic. And so let's add an element here. We have some negative spacing there, so I can't add directly. So I'll just add a whole new row. And inside there I'll add a button. And I'm going to give it no special styling. I'm just going to check the box and hit save. And now if we go over here and refresh, we should have a box to work with. Excellent. And so now I'm going to go into buttons and button style. You can see that it is taking these default styles and applying them. So if I tap up and down, there we go. The buttons I like to build are border radius maxed, background, let's see, here we are. Let's go with, here is our preset styles, by the way, so I'm just going to use this red that we've already set, because it's handily there. And it looks like the, yeah, you have to watch out, you can see that it's zero here, that means that they've put the opacity down to nothing, so I'm going to crank that all the way back up so it's a solid hex color. Text color will be white. Excellent, look at that, looking great already. And you can see it has that arrow there. That's down here. I'm going to make it all caps, more of a call to action that way. 
I'm going to pick a new icon. I'm just going to call it camera, because maybe it's a camera. So actually, yeah, it's Instagram. Duh. There we go. Icon color white, placement right, show on hover, yes. You can tweak those if you don't like it. I tend to like the little subtle animation it provides, a little more interest for the user. So I'm going to publish that. And now any button we add will look like that um, without us having to go into the design tab every time. And we can change the hover too if you want to like make it you know, slightly, I guess that would be nice. We'll take the red that we have, dim it just slightly, and now you can see it'll slide into that faded color. Other than that, there are mobile styles which you can get into, um, but that's more about the actual sizing, so it's deceptive, but you can skip that. Color schemes, also deceptive, don't need that. <laughs> Login editor is added by my child theme, so that's that's a different video in and of itself. So that is all you actually have to do to set the default logo, default font, and default colors. And so now just to display this a tad bit more, I'm going to refresh our visual builder here. I'm just going to not restore. And excellent. Let's go into this text section here and we set a default style for how links should look. So now that our visual builder has loaded, I'm going to make this random bit of text here a link by clicking here. Link it to google.com. And now it's red. Fantastic. I think bullets were also part of the accent feature, so let's go into here and give ourselves a new line, create a bulleted list, test one, test two. Okay, so this is a good um, example here. So in this case, bullets was an accent in the footer, but it actually didn't put that, which I actually like. I wouldn't want to have multicolored ULs unless it was intentional. So um, this, you always want to test your settings and test the theme stuff, and that's where you decide if you really wanted that, then it would be up to you to go in and override that on a per case basis, which is more typical to what you would actually do when building a site. So this way you can go in and you can change the... Um, text color of the unordered lists, and if you really want to change the color of the disks, you can do that with some custom CSS, which is another video. Feel free to let me know if you want to see that. And the last thing I'll showcase is just when you're in this text editor, we also told it to set that style for headings, so I'm going to add an H2 and an H3. You can see this is this is an H3. You can see that it all caps it like we set. It uses that font we told it to, and it does the relative um, sizings that we gave it. Essentially, it takes the biggest one and scales it down, if, if I recall correctly. And so this is already preset. We don't have to go in and set this. So now when you create new blog posts or when you have people hired on your team who are supposed to go in and do copy edits or create content to increase your blog size, this way, you don't have to micromanage and check that they all follow the same brand guides. Just have them type, and this will take care of the rest because you've preset it. And especially if you're building a fresh site, it saves you a lot of time so you don't have to go in and tweak every little font because changing the font every time is time consuming. And in the early days, that's what I did. It's a pain. Don't do it. Use these steps. With that, I thank you so much for watching, and I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button. It would mean a lot as we grow this channel to help more and more people build websites simpler with Divi, WordPress, and other tools that are coming down the pipe. Thanks so much, and have a great day.